What's going on everybody and welcome to part 8 of our Python 3 basics tutorial series. In this video, what we're going to be talking about is kind of revisiting the concept of mutability. Uh, because I think it's pretty important that we don't get through the basic series um, uh, using the methodology that we're using and not address mutability. I'm not sure if that logically made sense, that string there. But basically, the way that we're doing things right now is, is we're modifying this game, uh, this game variable outside of this function here. And we're able to do that because it's mutable. But uh, this can be very tricky at times. And later on, if you continue to code with the assumption that that's going to work out for you, eventually you're going to hit a wall. <laughs> and it's not going to feel good. And you're not going to understand like why you're hitting this wall. And it's like the most frustrating thing in the world when you believe you're like rereading your code. You're like, I've done this a million times. Why isn't this working? This is logical. This is so simple. <laughs> and you're going to just be pulling out your hair. So, um, so I think I would be doing a pretty big disservice if I didn't at least bring it up because it's probably not going to come up again. Um, and arguably, I don't think this has ever come up in any tutorial. I've never really addressed um, this, but it, it can bite you. So let's talk about it. So, uh, so, so sometimes you might see, so like <clears throat> if you want to modify a value outside of a function, if it's a list of lists, um, we can at least do one thing and that is set a value. Remember that <laughs> set a value in that list of lists. Okay. We're getting away with that. We can do that. But um, that's not the case for everything that we could plausibly be working with. So, um, so what I'm going to do is, I think for now, I think what I'd like to do is, um, I'm going to comment this out and then we're going to show some examples and then I'm going to show you what I think would be a superior method of, of kind of building these kinds of things. So first of all, I'll just comment those out in multi-line comment, make some space and... Um, and in fact, what I'll, what I'll do is I'm going to copy all of this. I'm just going to copy that Come up here, paste, and then we're going to run uh, game board, um, just display, just display true for now. And, and in fact, actually we can just run game board because that it won't matter for the purposes here. Um, and let's run that. Okay, so that works, right? Now, um, I guess I am going to make the change that I wanted to make. But basically, we want this function to eventually return, um, return game board. But game board is printing. So maybe what instead what I'd like to do is uh, let's print. Man, this is this is challenging. So I'm trying to show. I want to show an exact change. <laughs> <laughs> um, that's okay. So, so anyways, game board, we print game board and we can see no change has been made. And then if we were to run, um, player one, row one, column one. And what if we, we can print, um, game here. And then after running game board, we can print game again. So we'll have like three games basically. And we can see initially, okay. Um, and then here's the pretty modified version. And then here is after the function has run yet again, a version where that one is indeed modified in there. Now what I'd like to do is change this. So we're going to change first the variable here of game and we're going to make it instead of string. I want to play a game. And, uh, now what I'd like to do is take game board. We're going to get rid of all of the parameters. Um, but none of these parameters were important. We weren't like passing, we were never passing game into here anyways. These were just going to be used later. And in fact, we actually could leave these here because we're, we don't, we're not even going to use them. And, and that's fine. We can leave them there. And instead what I'm going to do is I'm just going to remove this code here. And all I want to do now is change game to be a game. Now, knowing what you know, um, What's going to happen when we run game board? And if, just to keep things clean, I'm going to remove that just so it's a little simpler. Um, but 
you're probably expecting game to end being called a game. Let's go ahead and run it though. And we can see here, no, that's not true. What if we print game here? Because a moment ago we were somehow able to access the game, but now we're unable to access game early on. So immediately we know something is afoot. And uh, let me run this again. And then, uh, so, but then what if we print game after we've set a game? Okay, so we're thinking everything's good at this point, and then we get down here, and we're back to, I want to play a game. That's because this string is immutable. <laughs> we can't be, we can't go and change that. So, um, so this can start to kind of run you into some trouble uh, later on. So like what if we were to do this? So what if we said print? And one thing we can do is we can always check the unique ID of a element in Python using the built-in function ID. So we'll check the ID of game here and then we can check the ID of game here and then maybe at the very end again. So start thinking about okay what do you think which IDs are going to be the same? Do you think this and this ID will be the same, or this and this ID, or all three will be different, and so on. Okay, so we can see here, the first ID, let's say, ends in 152. The next ID ends in 376. What about, oh, I'm sorry, the first one, <laughs> sorry guys. Uh, the first one ends in 376. The next one ends in 152. And then it finally, it ends in 376. So basically, from the beginning, this function never actually modified the value of game in the beginning. And that's a pretty big deal. So, uh, so let's go back to playing with uh, lists then, shall we? So let's do, we'll print game. I don't wanna print the IDs anymore for now, I don't think. And in fact, let me just comment that out. Because we'll, we'll come back to printing the ID of game, but right now I just don't really want them. So I paste that into there. And I'm going to get rid of that one. Actually, we should leave it. I'll comment that out. So then what if we change game to be now a list? Uh, one, two, and three. And then game. What if now we just try to, what if we try to call game a list at this point? What happens? Uh, we got one, two, three we change it to be a game, or so we thought, right? Wasn't this supposed to be mutable? We were just seeing examples of it being mutable moments ago, right? <laughs> now we've got game equals a game. We print, um, oh, we never ran. <laughs> Let's run game board. Uh, game board, there we go. Okay, we, we run here, we do print game here, and sure enough, it says a game, but still, at the end, we get one, two, three. So it still didn't get modified, despite us thinking, wait a second, wasn't this, well, moments ago, a list of lists seemed to be mutable, right? Well, what about game uh, one equals 99? Now what happens? Now we see, oh, we have modified the initial one now, because it, again, here, if we were to print, um, let's print the IDs, we'll see that they changed IDs. But um, if we just simply, oh no, <laughs> okay, good. <laughs> I thought we were gonna get in trouble there. Wow, I'm definitely hitting Y and it's uh, not going in my favor. Okay, anyways, uh, game one equals 99, run that again. Um, let's see, what have we done wrong here? <laughs> Uh, game, game one, game board. Uh, print game. Um, hold on. Why are you still, see, I feel like it's still defying me, and this time it shouldn't be defying this way. Are we not running, okay, we're not running game board, I see. Game board. I'm confusing myself. <laughs> I'm like, wait a second. <laughs> okay, so printing out game again, we can see here it does indeed modify it. So what are we able to do? We're able to modify, right? We're able to modify that that um, that object. So we can we can change the value of that object. But can we change the object itself? No. Okay. 
So that can get us into some uh, some serious trouble down the line. Now, the last thing I want to do, and last time I tried to do this, we got into trouble. Let's see if I can get away with it. I'm trying to get back to I want to play a game. Cool. And we stay with I want to play a game. One more thing for me to show you guys is we can actually global game. And so if we say, oops, so global, oh my gosh, global game, uh, what this does is it sets game to be a globally accessible and manipulable, manipulatable. Anyways, it sets it to be a global value that we can start modifying from within this function. It's going to affect that variable name globally. So uh, the way that's going to work is we will be able to modify game now. So for example, uh, if we run this, uh, we've globaled game. Uh, we're not passing game board. Of course, I continue to run into that and I keep trying to run it. And I'm like, wait, it's not doing what I said it was gonna do. Okay, now, okay, now <laughs> it has been modified to be a game. And it gets a new ID and all that. And then if we were to print game down below here, uh, print ID of game, we see that it retains the new game value that it got from the game function. But at the same time, even though that, um, that has happened, it also has modified this initial, it literally changed that variable up above. Okay, so a lot of stuff to unpack there for sure. I also have passed um, in the text-based version of this tutorial, I put in a little a little quiz and uh, that Daniel or Danos from the Discord uh, wrote up. And I think it's actually a pretty good quiz. Um, so if you want, I'll have the link to the text-based version of this tutorial uh, in the description. Go there and like copy and paste this code into like some script or something. And beside all the X's or on a sheet of paper or whatever, say, okay, here's what I think X is gonna be equal to, right? And then run it and see how you did. Even after like seven years of Python, I still missed one of them. It was, uh, I don't really wanna talk about it necessarily, but it was uh, this one here. Uh, <laughs> and at least I think it was, it was the, I want to say it was the middle one. Yeah, okay. It was that one. Um, and, you know, maybe for you guys or people that are following along that have nothing to do with the basics, maybe you missed nothing on this test. But my argument is if you missed anything on this little quiz or you had to think kind of hard about it, chances are when you're like zooming through writing a program, that's how I, I program, by the way, um, you are highly likely to make the mistake. So the whole point of this tutorial has been one to draw your attention to how you can run yourself amok um, with mutability, but also I would argue we should go ahead and just pass game um, here, or maybe better put, let's call it game map or apparently game board. Where did that come? Oh, that's the name of the function. <laughs> let's not do that. So we'll call it game map. So we pass game map I would argue, let's go ahead and call this game map. So we're gonna modify this temporary game map variable here. Uh, game map, game map, uh, enumerate, game map. And then when we're all done, return game map. Now again, in this exact problem, in this exact code, this is not really doing anything special for you, but, Unless you can write perfect code or take that quiz and get it right every time and always never make that mistake, I'm just going to argue um, that maybe you want to get in the habit of doing things this way or do you want to check it every time. But in general, this is the way I would just write everything. It may not be necessary to do it in all cases, um, but I would do that. And, and honestly, I went through a good probably four or five years of Python before I realized there was a thing going on there. <laughs> and I just always wrote code this way. And you know what? It never got me in trouble. So anyway, just gonna share that. I know I'm confident some people are gonna disagree with that methodology. And if you do disagree, that's all right. 
write it however you want to write it. But in this case, if we're going to say game map and then return game map, we will always want to say something like this game equals game board um, and then game equals game board when you want to play. And uh, let me just run that real quick. Okay, what's our error? This is zoomed in like way too much for me. Uh, type error, missing one. Oh, we're not, pa okay, we didn't pass the actual game map. Okay, um, so game, and then we pass game. Okay, and now everything acts in the exact same way. So the idea here is you pass the game map or whatever object you're attempting to manipulate with your function, you pass it, you modify that temporary you know, parameter va value or variable, and then you return it when you're done. And then when you're using it, you say the thing that you're attempting to modify equals the result of that thing, and you pass that thing and all that. So um, in terms of efficiency, I haven't run it. So if you wanted, if you were looking to scale a program to like, you know, millions of connections at a specific time, uh, this may not be the best way to do that, um, but a lot of code isn't like that. So, and this is really just a basics tutorial, but I would take that into consideration in terms of how you should be doing it. And obviously if the thing is immutable, we can't do it like with a string or something like that. Um, then you will have to treat it this way. But if you have something like this, where we're just trying to modify a certain value in a list of lists, no, it's not required. But if you go through your programming tutorial thinking you can do everything this way, you're going to quickly find out, no, no, no. <laughs> you may not do it that way. So anyways, pretty long tutorial on that, but uh, it needed to be covered. Like I said, definitely check out the um, quiz uh, that's in the text-based version of the tutorial. It's just kind of a, a good little quick, quick test to see, uh, <laughs> see if you understand it. And if you don't, come to the help, uh, help channel in uh, the discord.gg slash syntax, and uh, somebody there will be happy to explain uh, something if, if you are confused. And finally, a quick shout out to my most recent awesome, awesome channel members. We've got Fluff, Bill, Michael Newham, and Ace Ryder. Thank you guys very much for your support. It allows me to do videos just like this one, so I really appreciate it. I hope everybody has enjoyed, and I will see you in the next video.